Hey guys, welcome back. We have been discussing about loss functions in this neural network from scratch series. So far we have discussed about L1 loss, L2 loss and their variants. In this video we will discuss about smooth L1 loss and Hoover loss functions. These are actually preferred loss functions compared to L1 and L2 losses because they are more stable. Actually they are combinations of L1 and L2 losses. So they work as L1 loss under certain conditions and work as L2 loss under the other conditions. Now first we will go through the smooth L1 loss and then later we will come back to Huber loss. So this is the formula for smooth L1 loss. So if you observe this, this term is actually square root term which is L2 loss and this is actually absolute difference which is actually called L1 loss. So if x is my difference here between the prediction and the ground truth then smooth L1 loss is behaving like L2 loss under certain conditions and behaving like L1 loss under certain conditions. So if you check this, what are those conditions? If my difference is less than 1, that means if the loss value, if the error between the predictions and the ground truth is less than 1, then it is becoming L2 loss. If the difference is greater than 1, then it is becoming the absolute value, that means L1 loss. So if you check the graph here, these are the extremes minus 1 and plus 1. This is my limit. If the error value is between this limit, then actually it is following a quadratic curve. You can observe this, right? Because of this square root term. Then once it crosses these regions on both the extremes, then it is actually linear, right? So the smooth L1 loss curve is actually behaving like a quadratic curve here within this particular range. And then it is becoming linear once it crosses the range. So it is a combination of both L1 loss and L2 loss. So what does this one signifies? Why should I keep a limit and then restrict these things? We have seen the problems in L2 loss, right? Like MSC loss, you take square root terms. What happens is if your data set is having lot of outliers, then your error values will become very high. So what we are doing here is if my difference is less, then I am fine with L2 loss. If I have outliers, then definitely this will become greater than one. Then in that case, I should go for only absolute values. I should not square the errors again. So that is what we are doing. So we are dynamically adjusting the loss values based on the error difference. So if you check this one, the advantages are both it behaves as L1 loss and L2 loss in different conditions, right? So it has both the advantages. And as I mentioned, it is less sensitive to outliers. And also it prevents the exploding gradients. So what is exploding gradient? In our previous discussions in the activation functions, we came across vanishing gradient problem where the gradients are becoming zeros and then it actually stalls the training process. The same way, there are chances that the gradients explode. That means going to very high values during the training. Smooth L1 loss prevents that exploding gradients. When does this exploding happens? This happens when your loss values are very high. So if your loss values are very high, automatically I'm taking the only absolute differences, right? I'm not taking the square root terms. So now with the smooth L1 loss, the loss value is smaller even in case of outliers. So it prevents exploding gradients. And as I mentioned, as it is actually a combination of both, it is actually used for most of the regression tasks because it has the advantages of both the loss functions. Now let us look at the derivative. So first thing is the smooth L1 loss function is a combination of L2 loss and L1 loss. If I take the derivative of L2 loss, then it becomes 2x. And if I take the derivative of L1 loss, then it becomes 1 or minus 1 because it's just x value depending on the sign. Now the smooth L1 loss is a combination of both then obviously the derivative will be the combination of both. So if for smaller values, the derivative will be x because when it behaves as L2 loss, the derivative automatically becomes 2x and we have the 0.5 term, so it gets cancelled. So automatically it becomes x here. And at the same time, if it is otherwise, then plus or minus one. So this is the derivative. If you see the graph, it looks like this. So if you see within the range of minus one and plus one, it is actually linear curve. This is actually linear. And beyond these limits, it is a fixed value, which is plus one or minus one, depending on the sign. So this is how the derivative looks like for smooth L1 loss. So it's actually piecewise loss function because for one particular range, it behaves as one thing and the other particular range, it behaves as a different function. So that's what we call it as piecewise terms. Even ReLU is a piecewise function, right? Let's see this function closely and see if we have any issues. We understood that if the error is small, then we should go for the square root term. And if the error is large, then we should go for only absolute term. We should not square it. That is fine. So when I say the error is small, how much small? Why should I keep only one here? 
in the regression generally we have real numbers right it can go from any value so why should i keep the error limit as only one why can't i keep it as two or five like i can use my own value right why should i keep it only one so i will consider if the error is greater than five that means the error is large it's my wish so in that case what if we don't keep it as a fixed value and keep it as a parameter that's what we call it as beta here so in place of one we are replacing with beta now this beta can be anything depending on the data set on which you are training i can set the beta value as 5 10 100 anything right so if you observe here the beta we are dividing the square term with this beta and multiplying this one with the beta so this is the final smooth l1 loss function for parameterized beta now are there any issues with this function as of now we solved one problem which is giving a fixed value as 1 we kept it as a parameter so i can change this parameter according to the data set that is fine but if you observe the training process it is not static it is dynamic the statistics changes throughout the training process so in the beginning the losses will be very high but as the training progresses the loss values reduces so is it right to keep a fixed beta value throughout the training no maybe a better choice is to adjust the value as the training goes you might have seen the concept of learning rate right learning rate we initially keep like 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 3 like that and then as the training progresses the learning rate will keep reducing because it has to adjust according to how the losses are going on so same way here we have to adjust this beta during the training process according to the loss values so that is what we call it as dynamic smooth l1 loss so there are many versions after this dynamic smooth l1 loss or self adjusting smooth l1 loss basically what happens is you don't fix the beta value you change this beta value so you can see that it is actually moving you change this beta value depending on some parameters now i am fine that i can change the beta value but what is it depending on how should i calculate my new beta value right what is the aim of the training process to reduce the loss values right so this beta we have to adjust so that it helps in the training process what if we observe these regression errors throughout the training process and then adjust the beta values based on the error values one example can be taking the running mean and variance of the loss function and using those values for updating this beta so this is actually so far about the smooth l1 loss now let's come to huber loss if you see the documentations there is a lot of confusion so in tensorflow documentation there is no definition for smooth l1 loss the function is available as huber loss but in pytorch there are actually smooth l1 loss and huber loss both functions are available so are they both same or different so if you observe the formulas both are very slightly different difference is very minor that you can actually use them interchangeably there is no harm in using huber loss in place of smooth l1 or smooth l1 in place of huber loss so if you observe this you don't worry about this beta and delta term okay you just think like this is also beta that's fine just the nomenclature is different if you observe these formulas what is the difference how can i change this formula to this i can actually change this to this by simply multiplying this beta right so i am just assuming that beta is equal to delta okay now if i multiply beta to this term then it becomes this term right the same way if i multiply beta to this term then it becomes this it's just very minor difference now we will see what these actually indicates so what is the difference it made to huber loss compared to smooth l1 loss so huber loss is equal to beta into smooth l1 loss this is what is happening right so in all the cases whether the error is smaller than delta or greater than delta whatever the case it is my huber loss is always beta times the smooth l1 loss let's say my beta is 3 then huber loss is 3 times the value of smooth l1 loss for the same predictions right it just scales the loss value by this delta term that is the only difference so you can use them interchangeably there is no harm in doing that as this delta or beta whatever the name you can you use as these values are increasing then the curves are becoming more quadratic in the initial value delta is equal to 1 which is the original version as long as this is one then only it is actually quadratic term after that it is linear but as we increase the delta term this particular window expands so minus 5 to plus 5 it is quadratic minus 10 to plus 10 it is quadratic like this so this delta is actually controlling the choice of using either l2 loss or l1 loss 
and this is the implementation it is pretty simple straight forward you just calculate the difference between them and if it is less than 1 or beta depending on the value you just do one particular calculation and else you do another calculation it's very simple it's straightforward